All right, so back working on the scalator dud again. And I want to try something a little bit different with this thing today. So I'm going to pull the turbo out, manifold out, and I want to try to build a spool valve. So I've seen a couple like concept designs of using a wastegate as a spool valve where you block off one of the divided sections of the turbo and then it opens up and like it spools one side until it makes boost and then it opens up the other side. So that's what I want to try. I do have the wastegate here. So the idea that I have is to leave the fire ring off of it because I don't really need it to work exactly like a normal wastegate does. But what I do want is to make sure that I have enough surface area so I'm not actually restricting the flow. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to hog out this opening a little bit and then weld on the, the valve to close the gap so I actually have a wider opening and then take off some material here to widen this back out. So this is a 38 millimeter gate. I want to get it open to like a 44 or a 46, something like that. A little bit bigger. The reason I got the 38 was because this uh, like 90 degree angle that's on it. So I feel like in my head I have an idea and let's just try it. All right, so here's kind of what I got right now. I ended up grinding off this little flange to make this valve a little bit bigger and then I modified the top to open that up. And then I mocked it up this way. So I have this dividing flange in here and the valve. So basically what I did was I, I added some material onto the valve and I've just been going through and, and grinding it so it's it's round. And then I mocked this up like this. So now what I think I'm I'm going to do is possibly scrap this whole housing except for the top mounting section. So I can cut that off, keep the mounting bolts, and keep this little tube that the valve rides in and essentially rework this. I might not use this piece, I'll probably use like a thinner piece of stainless, but essentially rework a piece like this with the mounting section and the valve guide welded onto the top here and then I'll just end up using this valve inside the divider. So it doesn't need to be completely sealed, like a fire ring would completely seal it. It doesn't need to be completely sealed, it just needs to divert the flow. So then I would still essentially be able to use this mounting section so I can weld the diaphragm on, but I don't have to use the 38 millimeter housing, and then I can make this valve as, as big as I want. So right now it's about 45 millimeters, and I should be able to weld that diaphragm on and get this thing to lift up. So I'd block the flow, all the gases would go to one side of the divided flange on the turbo, and then once it sees about six pounds, it would it would open up and then divert the rest of it to the other flange. So, and I do have some, some math that might help explain this a little bit because I know there's going to be concern about restriction and I kind of have some justification for it in my head. So basically, if you were to divide that log as two and a half inches in diameter, so if you were to take the surface area of the two and a half inches it's about 4.9 square inches of surface area in that tube. So you take two and a half inches divided by two, that's your radius, and then you take the radius squared multiplied by pi. So you take two and a half, divide that by two, one and a quarter, one and a quarter multiplied by one and a quarter multiplied by 3.14 was 4.9 square inches. So half of that is 2.45 square inches of surface area for half of it. So essentially if you were Dividing that tube in half, you would have 2.45 square inches of surface area that the gas can flow through to go to the one side of the turbo. So that 2.45 square inches is 1,580 square millimeters. And if you take the surface area of a 45 millimeter valve, that's 1,589 square millimeters. So essentially, if you divided it by two, this, it has the same amount of area to flow through as half of that tube does. So I did that because I wanted to make sure that the area is not gonna be physically smaller than what it currently uses. I'm not looking at the flange, like the T6 flange is huge. I'm looking at the, the size of the pipe. Like you could calculate the flange, but the pipe is a lot smaller than the opening of the flange. So that's kind of irrelevant. I'm just going by what is already the smallest area that that is flowing through, which is two and a half inches. So based on the math, it won't be a restriction because of the physical size, you might have some restriction because it's coming up and then goes through the valve and then there's like some extra 90s and stuff in there. So you might see some flow, but it's not gonna be restricted because of the size. So that's kind of the theory behind it anyways. 
So I'm just gonna finish it and then we'll see what works. Okay, so I got everything back together and I went to go test it and I blew a brake line actually, so I didn't get any driving footage. So I went out, kinda rolled into boost a little bit, it spooled pretty decent, and then I did a foot brake test and I watched the boost climb and it actually climbed pretty good. And then I was I pulled out my phone because I was gonna make a video of the uh like boost reading on the gauge and the brake pedal just went right to the floor so you can see i got brake fluid everywhere and ended up busting the brake line right there so that sucks that's like the last thing that i want to do on this truck is brake lines right now or ever so we're gonna have to do that anyways but based on the short little drive that i that i did get it seems like it, it's working okay. It's it's promising. So there's the whole like wastegate assembly in there. It's actually pretty compact, nice tight fit. It is hitting my uh, oil drain, so I might have to modify that a little bit. And I think I have it tweaked up here because the drain was leaking a little bit right at the flange. So I do have a little bit of oil leaking, but it was just a short drive. That's kind of what it looks like from the top side. So I just expanded my uh, back pressure sensor coil and ran the line through that. And then right up through the intake. So yeah, the thing is just flying at idle now. So it's, it's kind of funny how much faster it's spinning. And spins for quite a while. So other than getting rid of that damn cricket, I'm going to fix the drain on the turbo, fix the brake lines, and then we'll get this thing back out and do a little bit more testing. I did do a little pull, and it felt... Pretty decent like it didn't feel like there was that much of a change from what it felt like before so there's nothing like restricted that I can feel just from the short drive that I did take it on so I guess uh, you know proof of concept that idea that idea does work I think there's some things in hindsight that I would have done differently as I went through building it I started out spending I spent a lot of time trying to modify this housing to get this little, a little bit bigger so the idea was that I was gonna originally was gonna bolt this on and then I just decided to kind of chop the whole housing off of there and then just use the mounting section for the diaphragm. So I would have saved myself like an entire day of work if I would have just did this from the beginning, but I was still trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to do it. Uh, and then if you if I'm not using this, you could basically use whatever size valve or shape valve you wanted. So if you wanted to do a square valve or oval valve, you could still use the valve connected to the diaphragm for the wastegate section but you could make like a oval valve or rectangle. It doesn't really need the firing because all it needs to do is block the flow a little bit. It doesn't need to completely seal like a wastegate would normally, but it just needs to divert enough of the flow to get the turbo spooling and then it opens back up. So you could really do whatever, like whatever shape valve you wanted. You could make it as big as you wanted. Um, where the way that it was kind of going through the pipe on mine, I could have actually done like a, like a three inch by two inch wide valve and then still had a big section that's open. I know I did the math on the, the opening and that 45 millimeter opening is uh, technically big enough. It's the same amount of volume as half of that two and a half inch pipe. So it should still be good. And I did save this whole section untouched. So if worst case scenario, I don't like it, I can just chop it all out and weld this back on and be right back where I started. So that's it for this one. I'm gonna go in and edit this thing uh, and do these brake lines and you have a good night.